when it comes to implantology, there are three kinds of planning. One is treatment planning. Treatment planning is what all the teeth you want to keep, what all the teeth you want to uh, remove. Okay. So this comes under the treatment planning. The second planning is surgical planning. Surgical planning is <coughs> site selection where you are going to place the implant. What implant you are going to is whether basal or compressive and what is the diameter and length of the implant. Okay, and this comes under the implant surgical planning. So implant surgical planning, what are the incomes? Uh, before that, whether we need to do alveoloplasty. Okay. So whether alveoloplasty is needed or not, then where we are site selection. Some sites may not be favorable. Okay, some sites will be good. The third thing is type of implants for this. Width and size of the implant. Okay, width and length of the implant. Diameter and D and L. Okay, D diameter L length. So for this patient, we are going to remove upper 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 4 incisors. If you see here, so first we will plan the upper jaw now. The 1, 2 is palatally placed and 1, 1 is labially placed. Okay. So there is some amount of proclination of the upper incisor also that we are going to correct. So the arch length will decrease when we are correcting it. So that means even though we are removing 4 teeth, only 3 implants can be uh, placed. Placing 4 implants, no, it will lead to the implants close to each other and uh, trouble later. So 3 implant is enough for this situation. Now we will plan for the 3 implants after removing the 4 incisors. Okay. So whenever you are planning, draw arch form for e, that arch for maxilla. So where you have to keep the line in the mid alveolus, from the CEJ to the apex mid alveolus. That is where you have to keep the yellow line. You will get a good idea about everything. Okay. So this, 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 they will, they are going to knock. Okay. First, to see this panoramic view. See the distance between the teeth, especially the two which are going to remove and the two which are going to um, keep. There is good amount of bone here. Mm. It is a good situation. Mm. But if you see 4-3, it is very mm. close to 4-4. Four, 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 four. There is no interdental bone, very mm. less 0.5 mm bone. Mm. Okay, so these things you have to keep it in mind. Mm. Here you cannot go along the socket. You will be touching the next tooth. Okay. So four sites we have. One, two, one, one, two, one, two, two. Out of this we have to select a three. Three sites. Okay. So if I select one, two. Okay. Any site, there are two possibilities. One is you can place the implant straight like this. Another possibility is you can place the implant either distally or Initially. So there are three possible yes. angulations in the mesial distal plane. Yeah. Okay, now we will analyze the one two. Through the apex we are analyzing it. Mm. So there is very little bone over the root, only the apex is covered with bone. Okay. Labial cortex, palatal cortex, this is the intramedullary bone, this is the nasal bone. Maxillary buttress. No, it's not maxillary buttress. So, um, so, there are four kind of shape of anterior maxilla that you should read. Okay. So, through the apex we should not go implant. Okay. If you go through the apex, it will be close to the labial, labial bone. Okay, buccolingually it is better if the implant is in center, right? Mm. So, yeah. so if you go like this, that means from the apex you are starting the drilling 3 mm below the apex. So this is the guideline. So this is the apex. Mm. From the apex 3 mm 
mark the drill then do the drilling whether to select compressive or not we will design now you can put a compressive also okay so if i am putting compressive i am not measuring from the crest because you are going to submerge the implant a little bit mm. okay so i am not measuring from the crest of the bone i am going to mm into the crest bone. so around 16 mm implant it is there okay so it is better if you go till the nasal floor because the nasal floor is good in quality you can see the number 1300 but if i am keeping short of the nasal floor it is only 186 something like that so it is better if you go till the 16.8 something it shows maybe 16 or 18 millimeter implant we can use okay now this planning is based on axis straight away going through the on the apex now we will tilt it okay if you tilt it still the bone marrow is uh, not very good the cancellous mm -hmm. so to reach the nasal floor you have to go still more longer 18 mm, mm -hmm. okay so if tilting distally leads to good bone no here then you can tilt here also it is porous to reach the nasal floor you have to select a longer length of implant mm -hmm. so better if i am selecting one two i will go along the long axis i won't tilt it now we will come to one one so the problem with one one is it is close to nasal canal nasopalatal canal mm -hmm. okay nasopalatal canal is quite big for this patient mm -hmm. right see the opening is very big mm -hmm. if our implant goes into the nasopalatal canal See from here to here, you know, mm. about 6-7 mm of implant will be in the canal. Mm. There won't be any osseo integration. So, mm. so to avoid that, what I can do is I can tilt the implant slightly mm. distally. Measly canal is there. If you tilt measly, it will go into the canal. So if I tilt measly, I am getting good amount of bone. Okay, without the entrance from nasopalatine canal. Around 18 mm good the bone. Even the bone is good. Okay, you can see 420 mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Better than one two. But if I am slightly tilting this measly, it is better to tilt this one two also distally. slightly distally. Mm -hmm. Right? Now our plan changes. Right? Mm -hmm. Now we are seeing the two, two one. So 2-1, if I am drilling close to the mesial socket, I may get a separate anchor on. So I am drilling slightly close to the distal socket. Okay. See here, if you drill through the apex, you will come out. Mm -hmm. You will perforate. Okay. So never, don't drill through the apex blindly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may need to drill through the apex. Mm -hmm. So this depends on the uh, mm -hmm. uh, CVCT. Mm -hmm. So I am starting not from the crest, I am starting to remove from the crest because I am going to submerge the implant mm -hmm. a little bit. So around 16 mm, you can place. Mm -hmm. From the apex, about 5 mm. Mm -hmm. Because apex is too close to the label pit. Mm -hmm. If you drill 3 mm from the apex, mm -hmm. our abutment will come very parallel. So you can extend this arrow mark to understand where the abutment will come. Mm. Okay. Come till the crown. So the abutment will come legally then you have to bend. But if you drill just below the crest, the abutment is will come in the quite favorable situation mm. within the crown. Mm. So simple techniques to understand your abutment position after your implant is good. So one one sorry two one you got good bone mm. okay. now one two sorry two mm. okay mm. see also the apex is close 
but the entire buck calling will thickness is less okay so around 20 mm it goes right so longest stem plan you have to select mm -hmm. in one two so sorry two two mm -hmm. so out of this we have to knock out one implant which one to knock out? two and two two they are good ideal mm -hmm. okay so we will keep it there is labial bone loss in the two. One, one two. two. Of course, whatever bone loss you are seeing in 3B it will be 20 or 30 percent less in real life. Mm -hmm. In real, okay. It's slightly exaggerated uh, and it tells. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I am selecting one two, it is better if I do basal because there is very less labial bone. Mm -hmm. If I am placing compressive, then I have to submerge it very much. Mm. Otherwise, the crustal part of the implant will be exposed. Mm. Okay. So one plan is we can put a BCS basal in one two mm. and leave one one. Mm. Without implant, or you can place one implant in one one with a distal angulation. Mm. Okay, because the bone also good in the intramural bone also good. In one one we will place one implant distal angulation. Mm. Okay, to avoid mesially the canal, the separating canal. In the situation one incisor will come as a mild cantilever. Right? Yes. Ah, that is okay. Now place one basal in here. Mm -hmm. So if I am placing basal in PCS design in one two, what is the length? So we have to reach till the nasal floor. Till here it will go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So around 20 mm. Mm -hmm. This is also an option. 